Hey, guitar fam and friends. Welcome to this week's The Improv Loop episode. I believe this is episode number five. And we're going to take a look at playing over major chords. Um, as beginner improvisers, generally speaking, you're only going to be improvising over one of two types of chords to begin with, either major or minor. Yeah, you can get into all sorts of chord extensions, uh, augmented or diminished chords, but for the most part, for what we're going to be doing, and for most of the songs you're going to hear on the radio, you're going to be either improvising over major or minor chords. And if you can do that, then you're going to be well on your way to being able to improvise and play really cool solo. So it's really important. And this um, kind of brings up a really important point for learning how to improvise. And that is br always bring break things down to the basics, their smallest uh, components that you can. And uh, I find that to be true with whatever I'm working on on guitar. If I'm struggling with something, it usually comes back to breaking it down to the basics and the foundations and really just hammering that out until I can, you know, I know the basics forwards and backwards so well that I can apply it in different ways to the guitar. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. And I guess another way of saying that is all, what we're going to be doing here in the improv loop is taking things that you already know as kind of a upper beginner slash intermediate guitar player and repurposing them or just thinking about them differently. So do your best to think about what we're going to learn in this lesson, not as something entirely new, but just looking at something you already know in a different way. So the thing that you already know for this lesson that we're going to try to pick apart and just look at it a little bit different way is your E major bar chord shape. So hopefully you know that. If not, you can go to the Guitar Fam site and start going through the bar chord master class. The E shape is taught in the first module, and the first module is free for everyone. But hopefully you know this one. So let's take a look at how to use this to solo um, using that shape. Um, often guitar players will start out when they're trying to learn how to solo with a G major scale or something like that. Or a G major pentatonic scale. And then they'll wonder why they're playing sounds like they're just running up and down scales. So the reason is when you're first starting out, it's just too much information and you kind of get caught in this loop of just going up and down the scale. So what we're going to do, and this is going to be an overall theme in the improv loop uh, series of lessons, is to break things down into their smallest individual components so it's not as hard to use. And um, before we get into the shape, the first component of that you need to be thinking about of this E shape is just the root notes, where the root notes are. And the, there's three, but the two easy ones to remember are on the high E string and the low E string. Those are both G notes, right? So if you can remember where those notes are, you have at least two notes, or two, one note in two different places where you can go. If somebody's playing a G chord, put some vibrato on it or slide into it, and it'll sound good, you know that'll sound good. But you need to memorize where those root notes are. And there's another root note right here on the D string. It's really important as you learn how to improvise and uh, you learn how to use chord shapes up and down the fretboard that you memorize where the root notes are in these uh, chord shapes that we're going to be using. So low E string, D string, and then the high E string. Okay? Now, to take a step back even further and break things down even further, let's just take this G note and play that over a G chord. And then we're gonna be using the same chord progression that we used last time, just a G, C, D progression. So two bars of G, two bars of C, two bars of D, and then two more bars of G, and then it just repeats over and over again. So I want you to play a G for two bars. And then we're gonna move the shape and the root notes and everything along with it up to a C, the location for C. So we need to find a C on the low E string and the high E string. And that's the eighth fret. So you can play that C for two bars. And don't worry, we won't keep it this simple the whole time. Then the next two bars moves up to a D major chord. So you're gonna move the shape up to the 10th fret, put your bars on the 10th fret, and that'll give you your two root notes on the E strings to play. And then don't forget you have one on the D string too that's already in the shape. So three root notes to choose from, and that's like step one, you have to know the names of the notes and the kind of these home base notes for whatever shape we're using. In this case, we're using the E shape. So I have a loop here of just G, C, D, and back to G. Two measures each. I'm going to play it and just play the root notes on the high E string. There you go. One, two, three, four, G. Move all the way up to C on the eighth fret. 
going up to D on the 10th fret. Then back to a G, 3rd fret. Okay. Okay, now there's a reason why I grabbed that with my first finger, and you'll see why later, but be sure to grab all those notes with your first finger because it kind of sets you up to play the shape we're going to talk about here in a second. Now, it, a little a backstory on the theory, music theory behind chords. A chord is just made up of the root, the third, and the fifth of whatever, a major chord is made up of the root, third, and the fifth of what its corresponding major scale. So if you have a G major scale, spelled G, A, B, C, D, E, and F sharp, you would just take the first, third, and fifth notes out of that chord, or out of that scale to come up with the notes in a G major chord. So a G major chord will end up being G, B for the three, and D for the five. So those are the notes in a G major chord. But the, the important thing is you don't need to necessarily memorize the names of the notes in a chord right now. What you need to memorize is the formula that a major scale or a major chord is made up of the root of the third and the fifth because those are the notes we're going to be pulling out of the shape to improvise over these chords. And so what ends up happening is like if you look at this chord and then kind of truncate it, take off the low two strings, what I'm going to do is end up playing this shape. and breaking it down to where, now instead of playing just these two root notes on the D string, the fifth fret of the D string or the third fret of the high E string, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it in with the rest of the notes in that chord. And if you look at this, I'm just fingering this chord in a different way like this. What I'm doing is playing fifth fret of the D string with my third finger, fourth fret of the G string with my second finger, third fret of the B string with my first finger, and then my index finger is also laying over and kind of mini barring the third fret of the high E string. Okay, and we already know, or we should realize that this high E string is a root note and the D string is a root note, just because the shape and that shape, both of those notes are root notes, right? So what are these other two notes in here? Well, they're either gonna be a third or a fifth of the chord, because remember we said major chords are made up of a root, a third, and a fifth. In this shape, it's really convenient because if we start on this root note here on the fifth string with our third finger there, that root note, J, G, it goes up in order of the way the chord is built. So this is a root, this next note is a third, this next note is a fifth, and then we're back to a root. Super convenient to think about, not that hard. Mainly, you have to put in the time and the brain power and effort to memorize it. Root, third, fifth, root, and then go backwards to root, fifth, third, root. So you know you can play these two notes over a G chord, these two root notes, and it's gonna sound good, but you can also play this third, and you can also play this fifth. Now, one thing that helps you, or helps me, to be able to memorize and differentiate between the third and the fifth is I always like to slide up to the third when I'm doing exercises like this with improvising, just because it makes it sound a little bluesier and it gives it a little style too. And when you do that, sliding up will help you memorize and really retain where that third is. So if I have a root here, and here's the third, what I'm gonna do is go fret below and slide into that third. And that makes it really bluesy sounding. Instead of just going, I can go. And when I do this, like the, the first step to getting this down is to be able to get this fingering down. You can not do that bar on top if you want, just these three notes. And then clap your finger over to get that other high E string. But those fingers are gonna be designated for those frets. So when I play, when I play root, it's my third finger. When I play the third, it's my second finger. I can slide in. And then the fifth is gonna be with my first finger. And then this other root will be with my index finger. We really haven't done anything differently. We just, um, looking at something we already knew, this E major bar chord shape in a different way. We picked out where the root notes are, those staple, like mainstay notes, and then we filled in the rest with root, third, we can slide up to the third, the fifth, and back to the root. And what this does is instead of having just, you know, a huge selection of notes, like a whole major scale, 
or instead of just having just a root note, now we have three notes to choose from that we can use to play over any major chord that you can think of. All we have to do is move the shape around to where the root notes match whatever chord we're playing over. So uh, what I would suggest doing is just start with one chord. You can even program just a G chord in your looper if you have it and just play G or one, three, five, one, five, three, one, and get that slide in there, one. Slide into the three, five, one, five, three, one. And you'll notice I'm singing the numbers at the same time. That's a really important thing that will help break down the barrier between your brain and your guitar. And it'll help you learn faster too. And as you get more, more and more comfortable with this, you can start adding in notes here and there like I just did and um, getting a little bit trickier with them or a little more expressive with it. Um, but varying your rhythm, you know, sliding into that third of some things that can make your playing more interesting just using these three notes. And so now anytime you have a major chord being played, you have three solid options to choose from. So if somebody's playing a G and I know where the third is, I can start on that and be very deliberate about what uh, note I'm choosing to play or what I want to hear over it. If I want to hear the fifth instead, I can memorize where that fifth is and da -da -da. do my best to sing it so I can know what it sounds like before I'm going to play it and then make a, you know, an educated choice about what note I'm actually going to. And all of a sudden you have all these things just instead of being stuck and just guessing, you have some go-to things that you can, you know, over time embellish and add to. Chelsea just came in with Wendy's. There's a burger sitting right over there and I can't do anything about it right now. So the key here is gonna be to get so familiar with the shape that you can go to a root third or fifth, just like that, and then move that shape around to where you can play over any major chord. But I would really recommend getting it down just in this one location with a G before moving it around, just so you don't feel overwhelmed. But once you can do that, you know, root third, fifth, root fifth, third, root, then you start moving it around so for our jam track, the next chord in the sequence is a C, so move your shape up to where it's on a C. So your index finger will be on the eighth fret and your third finger will be on the 10th fret. Those are your root notes. And you wanna be able to see this chord as you play this and just play through it. Same thing, the cool thing is nothing changes. It's a big rubber stamp. The only thing that changes really is the root notes. So you have to think about this C and this C and then you're set. So root, third, slide in, fifth, root, fifth, third, root. And then you can do the same thing, move the shape up to a D. So D on the 10th fret with the index finger. Then your third finger is on the 12th fret on that D. So now you have this one shape that can fit over any major chord. What if somebody is playing in the key of B flat and you're like, I don't know. I don't know how to play over a B flat chord. Well, now you have at least three notes that you can play over a B flat. All you have to do is find a B flat on the high E string on the sixth fret and just try to get creative and expressive with the three notes that you have available to you, right? And to me, that sounds better than, you know, than a scale. The more you fiddle with this, the more you'll be able to add to it. But starting with the basics that you already know is really important. So as a basic exercise without the loop for that pressure yet, just play a G up and down and then go to a C and then move it to a D. You know, very academic, kind of dry. That's okay for now. You can get more creative with it once you get more comfortable with it. And this is a really good opportunity if you don't know the names of the notes on the D string yet, make that your goal for the next couple of weeks because you're already trying to reference things um, from the high E string, but also that root note on the D string is really important. And you want it, what you want to get away from is reference, constantly referencing everything back to this low E string. That's the root note that most people learn for this shape and the root note that most people reference. But you want to be able to start anywhere on either of the root notes, even on the fifth or the third, and know exactly what you're playing. And then things will kind of fall in place from there, but you have to start somewhere. So do that, and then C right here, and then D, and you can go, you can even change keys. If you want to do a different key for the week, you can do something like B flat, 
E flat, F, and then back to B flat. But this gives you three solid note choices for any major chord that you're gonna come up against. And it's simple, but you have to start somewhere. Here's what it will sound like when you play over the jam track, just keeping it ultra simple, so doing uh, some slides into the third and just staying with the notes in the triad, the major chord. Triad means three note chord, that's all we're doing. We're outlining the notes in the chords we're playing over. Here you go. Okay, this is a little bit academic, I fully admit that, but you have to start somewhere. You can learn all of your chord shapes up and down the fretboard, but if you can't use them, then what good are they? It's better to know one really well and be able to use it than it is to know all you know five of your core major chord shapes up and down the fretboard or in pentatonic scales or major scales, but not really be able to purposefully make music with them. So start here and you can add to it more and more when you go on. For example, like I could start with a G here, uh, in the shape that we were using. And then if I wanted to move to a C, I could use this C. If I wanted a D, back to a G. And that's down the road. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't feel like you have to do all of that right now. Just focus on this one shape and you'll have something that you can really use. If you're struggling with any of this or if you need a little bit of extra help, go to guitarfam.com and schedule a personal private one-on-one -on -one lesson with me. The first one is complimentary, so there's no pressure or no obligation. If you have any questions in general, you can leave them on the comments for this video and let us know about any topics you'd like to see covered in the Improv Loop series. I don't know how long we'll keep it going for. I've, uh, I would like to cover at least major and minor chords with this E shape and then talk about some phrasing stuff and some more uh, stylistic stuff like bending and vibrato, but that'll kind of be up to you guys. See you later.